Okay, so the question we want to look at here is determine the area to the nearest tenth of a centi square centimeter of the triangle that has side lengths of 32, 19, and 15. Okay, well let's, first of all, let's draw this out. Let's see what it looks like here. So, there we go. And so the way I'm going to label this here, we're going to put the 32 down here, 32 centimeters. And then one side is longer than the other here, so it's going to be 19 centimeters, let's say, and 15 centimeters. Okay, so we've got all three sides. Now, I want to take a look at that um, and think, okay, I need to know the area. Uh, well, I need the base. Area is going to be one-half base times height. Okay, so let's put that over here. So area is going to be one-half base times height. Well, the way I've drawn it here, I've got the base. I've got the base of 32. Now, I could have made, whoops, I could have made that anything. could have made that the base 19 or 15. It's just easier to make it the 32 here. So one-half, 32 centimeters what I'm missing here is the height. Okay, so let's drop an altitude right there. And that's going to be my height. Okay? So that's good. So now I want to figure out what the height is. And now I've created a right angle triangle. Okay, I've created two right angle triangles here. And I can use either one here. Now what I don't want you to think right now at this point here is that that altitude has cut the base in half. It's not like this has become 16 and 16. That would have been true if these two sides were the same, if this was an isosceles triangle, but it's not. So that altitude is actually a little bit further over uh, this way uh, than it is this way. So this is going to be a little bit more than 16. This will be a little bit less than 16. Okay, so that's, that's not going to work. So I can't use the Pythagorean theorem to do this. I also can't use just regular, you know, Sokotoa. And the reason for that is in this right angle triangle, I don't, I don't have very many bits of information. I've got the fact that this is 90 degrees, and I've got the fact that this is 19. Okay, well, that's not enough information. I need at least three bits of information. So what I'm going to need to do here, recognizing that in the larger triangle, I have all three sides, I'm going to use the cosine law. Okay, and so now, if I, if I label this, let's say I call this A, B, C, and I'm just going to pick, let's pick angle A to look for so the cosine law says that angle A will be the inverse cosine of, and I'm going to draw out the kind of the set of parentheses here for the way this one works. Okay, now when I fill this in, I'm going to use just the sides here, but the side that I'm going to subtract in the numerator, and if, you, if you've seen the cosine law, if you look at it, and this question here is assuming you have, I'm going to do, use the sine opposite sorry, the side opposite the A here, and that's the one that I'm going to put over here, subtracted, so minus 15 squared. That's, that's how that works. So right now, I really need it to look like that in order for the rest of this to fit into place here, because from this point on, I'm just going to plug in the other sides here, so 19 squared plus 32 squared. It doesn't really matter what order I put those in, because order doesn't matter for addition. And then down here, it will be 2 multiplied by 19 multiplied by 32. And again, it doesn't matter what order I put those in because order doesn't matter for multiplication. Okay, so now let's plug this into the calculator. So second cosine, make sure I've got my other set of brackets there. So 19, whoops, 19 squared plus 32 squared minus 15 squared. I'm going to close the brackets for the numerator, divided by, open them for the denominator, 2 times 19 times 32. I'm going to close them for both. And when I hit enter, okay, I'm getting roughly 17.5 degrees. This is approximately, that's what the little dot means, approximately uh, 17 degrees. Now, I'm not going to use 17 degrees. I'm going to use the number that's on the calculator here in just a moment. But now, just to write it out on the triangle here, I've got this as 17 degrees. So what I'm going to do now is use that bit of information and the right angle triangle and just some basic trigonometry to figure out what the height is. Because when I look at this, I've got this angle. That means this is the opposite side. And because of its location in comparison to the 90 degrees, I know that's the hypotenuse. So now I can say that the sine of 17 degrees, although I wouldn't use that angle in the triangle, I'd use the, the one I got in the calculator, is going to equal the opposite h over 19. Well, I can think of that as sine uh, 17 degrees over 1, so I can kind of cross multiply here and make this 19 
sine of 17 is equal to h, and so there we go. So 19 multiplied by the sine, did I say, I said the sine of h, I meant the sine of, seven, uh, of the answer that we just came up with, 17. So 19 times the sine of the answer, and here we go. So the height is, to the nearest tenth here, is 5.7 centimeters. But once again, when I, I'm not done the calculation because I got to figure out the area. That was just the height. So I'm going to come back up here. But when I do this calculation, although I'm going to write it here as 32 times 5.7, I am going to use that number. So 0.5, there's my 1 half, multiplied by 32, multiplied by my answer here. And now to the nearest tenth, I'm going to get 91.2. centimeters squared. Okay, and there you go.